What's up, Skrillgers? It's Nerp here. Look, guys, I did it. Number one and number two with my two accounts. I've never done that before. Uh, I've gotten number one and number three about, like, eight months ago. Or maybe even more, more like ten months ago. But uh, never number one and number two, so I'm pretty proud of that. And to celebrate today, uh, we're just going to play some Highlander. I haven't recorded a Highlander video in quite a long time. So, let's see... Who uh, wants to play me? I'll be right back. Okay, Prince Eric is down. Let's shoot him a challenge. Ultimate Highlander. Don't know what Highlander is, it's when you have a deck of one of every scroll in the game. So, right now it's a 360 scroll deck. And we go first. So, good luck. Have fun. So, um... I have creatures in my starting hand, so I like that. So I'm going to keep that. Although, Invocation Sentry kind of sucks. And such a pack that I don't think we'll get much play either. So I'm just going to go straight into order. And I can go with a turn 2, Duplo Instrument, and then maybe even Eternal Sword if I need to. So it looks like we both have the full set of 360 scrolls. So yeah, this this uh fan made game type is very uh, very draw and luck dependent, but it's always fun. And after all my hard work ranking up, I guess I'll just sit back and have some fun here. Stone Enigma, that could be okay, but Invocation Sentry is probably gonna be bad. I guess mean, a four health wall, but whatever. I'll just go straight out for the Duke Infantryman. And I'm probably not going to play the Eternal Sword just because I'll probably rather go like for the Boom Reaver or something. Or at least go for all my resources so I can go into Wild. Alright, he has a turn 2 play as well. Alright, that was a good draw, Wings Warder. Okay, I'm going to go into Energy now and play the Wings Warder in front here. Nice 4 health in front. And if he does not have anything to protect that... Uh, that Nog with or increase the count on my Duplimetryman or anything like that, then um, it's going to die to an Eternal Sword next turn because my guy's going to have 3 attack. But we'll see. He goes for energy. And is there going to be a play? No play. So we'll be able to take that out. And Racking and Boom Reaver. I'd probably rather just have a, a decent creature. So I'll keep the Boom Reaver. It's also closer for me to get it. And um, I'm gonna keep both of these guys touching in case this guy somehow dies. At least I keep the Eternal Sword around. And I'll put them on the same row so you can't get rid of him too easily. Okay. So I'm three into order. I'd much rather be like dispersed, like one, 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 so I can start going for wild. So top deck of Rollstorm, that's a really good top deck. I'm going to just go ahead and sacrifice for scrolls with the Boom Reaver then. Um, I mean, you do want the spiky guy in front, but I feel like having the 4 health unit in front is just something that's pretty good also. I'd rather have that. It's interesting he went to 2 energy, so I'm not sure what he has going right now. I have an infected grave lock, which is bad, and a clock library, which would be good if it goes off. Storm Runner, so that's one of the best scrolls in the game. I hope I can somehow get rid of that. Not sure how I'm supposed to do this here. Uh, I could go for scrolls, but I this chance of me drawing anything useful is, is so slim. I'm just gonna start going for the other factions here, and hopefully next turn I top deck like an order thing or something. Let's go for growth because Wildman Ranger is a game changer. And I'm going to stay put. If he has like an iron whip, that'd be pretty annoying because then he could like kill the spearman. I don't want to move up because then if he has an iron whip, he can actually destroy this spearman and my Duke Lumpetrum and the uh, Eternal Sword would go as well. As well. So he um, is uh, going for more growth. Okay, so it's going to take a long time for him to get to wild. I'm going to get to wild first. Which should be good for me. And is he going to move up? Move down, I mean, to engage me and use that guy as a protection? No. Alright. 
Myrishama, that's a good draw. I can play that right away. I'll go ahead and get rid of the clock library. As cool as it is, I think a Wetland Ranger is just better. And I want to play the Myrishama last turn. So I'll sacrifice for Decay. I'll get everybody out of the Stormrunner's range. No point in taking any unnecessary casualties. And Stormrunner can't reach anybody good. So he does have like control of the board probably because a Stormrunner really locks things down. You have like a moving lobber. Now I can start going for wild. I can immediately go for two wild. Is right now on the live server you get to have two um, double wild as your resources, which is changing. Okay. You are attacking. If I sacrifice for scrolls, the chance of me getting something to play in. I mean, you can like fly around anyways and get to things. You know, I'll just go straight for wild though. I'll just play the Gravehawk. I could play it in front there and move you up, but then I'd probably rather. You can move around anyways. I don't know. I think I just hope he doesn't have like an Iron Whip on this Storm Runner. Chances of having an Iron Whip are very slim. 360 scrolls, only one of those is an Iron Whip. Uh, I'll put the Wings Warder in front. Yeah. And then I'll put the two guys that are attacking a little more forward and put the Gravehawk here. Okay, so if he has an Iron Whip, I am going to be upset. Let's just put it that way. And I have Wild now, but I'm out of scrolls. And he has more scrolls than me, so I have to hope he does not have scrolls that can punish me. Really, I'm only scared of. Oh, he goes to resources. What does he have? Let's see. Like if he has like a all right, metal wonder, okay. So I guess that might hurt me over a long period of time, but as it stands, I Reaping Massive Sacrifice for Scrolls. I might be able to just destroy the Storm Runner. I need the Meyer Shambler to attack this row. We'll see if I can do that. And I also have another unit to play, that's awesome. I could have an infectious blight next turn. That's perfect. So you're gonna have three attack. Oh no, yeah, I can easily get it to attack on this row. And I guess I should move the warder here so that, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, that was a strange placement he had there. I'm gonna easily be able to destroy it and may as well just play, play this up here, why not? Awesome. Now, there's not much he could do now. He's in four energy and three growth. He does not have the versatility in wilds and stuff and all resources to make a comeback in this game. I mean, yes, it's possible, but maybe just hoping that, that uh, this thing can go to work. Infectious Blight is really good. I think I'm gonna keep it over Destroyer, so sacrifice that for scrolls. And I topped like a Wing Spear and an Iron Whip. Let's see, let's see. Do I just take out bottom idol right now? Yeah, I think this is one of those games where like, yeah, I don't mind just taking out bottom idol right now because now I can have the two guys that uh, are on one countdown for next turn to be protected by the uh, warder. I could move up with the shambler so I can possibly hit this. Yeah, no, let's do that. And may as well just play that guy. He's not that good, but still another creature. And Prince Eric is searching for stuff he could play, but most things he can't because he only has two resources. So, he's kind of done here anyways, but his best chance of coming back is to go into the other resources and go for wild and then hope the draws turn out well for him. Gusty, it's going to take a while to play Gusty. I'm just going to sacrifice for scrolls. Arbor Lister, wow. So... Let's just take out that. That's probably a good idea. And I hope.
hope he doesn't have like a thunder surge and stuff like that. That would be annoying. I guess I'll keep the manga now. There, Little Wonder was able to hit an idol once. And I have Infectious Blight. I can't even play this stuff this stuck for next turn. I might just go strip with the Arbalister. Arbalistier. Tier 3 Arbalistier. Probably got it from Atmas. Um yeah, I have a turn to just sacrifice. So next turn I can play the Arbalister and this turn I'll just play Boghand. So two plus three is five. Okay, let's try to just win this soon. I don't care about him clipping up. Give him a chance if he has the right spells. Can I win next turn? Probably not. He gets a wing spear. And Rodent Rail, so that's gonna be kinda hard to destroy for me. Should be okay though. Infectious Blight. Or I'll cast Rubble. I'll keep the Blight. Shoot! I totally clicked the wrong resource there. <laughs> I messed up. Let's just hit an idol instead of losing our Meyer Shambler. <laughs> wrong resource. Guys, wrong resource. Meant to play the Arbalester. goes for scrolls and oh, I didn't notice I have the uh, dominion effect because I destroyed more than one idol well at least one idol and the Bokhan has some extra attack so I still can't win as it stands I don't have these scrolls to win it yeah let's say top deck like focus song seed of insurgency I'm gonna keep that over Infectious Blight. Like, having two Arbalisters would be amazing. Oh, yeah, and when he dies, his cat's time would be set to one. I don't plan on him dying, but either way. So, how do I want to do this? Do I lose you? I think I have to take him out. I mean, I don't really have to take him out, do I? Four and then two. Do I, have, do I have lethal? I think I have lethal actually. Yeah, I have lethal. Alright. Well, I got pretty good draws of that Highlander match. Wow, I got a, a lot of gold for Highlander. I guess I drew a lot of tier 3 scrolls or something. And... You know what, that was kind of short. I'll try to squeeze in another Highlander match in this video. One second. Okay, round two versus Prince Eric. Fair enough, he goes first this time. I went first last time. And I have pretty strong cards in my hand. But they're really high curve. I could go straight for a Frostbeard, Veteran, Urhald, which might honestly work. If I can get an Urhald attacking every turn, wow. You know what, we're going to do it. Probably won't work, but whatever. Okay, so Pierce and Jeshile I'll get rid of early on. We're going straight for growth. And on turn eight, we can play a Yarl. <laughs> That's in quite a long time. Budding better. Okay. Look at this beautiful stuff. I have like three tier threes in my hand. Once I get a full tier three, that's gonna be awesome. Another tier three, Vitriol Aura. Yeah, I guess playing Highlander matches really does make me a lot of gold because I have like, I have like 
a t most of the scrolls in the game. I think I have a tier three of so like, and I only have one in the deck. I think you guys understand that. This just, eh, wings warder or pure vitriol aura. Wings warder. I might need that. I don't want him to damage curse my <laughs> Yarl. Turn three, Frostbeard. I could have gone budding better. But I don't have any any other beasts in my hand, so I actually might end up helping him. So he's doing the sensible thing, not being crazy like me and going for one faction. He is um going to get wilds first. I don't know he's going for well, I mean he's still probably gonna get wild, but he gets a hired smuggler. So that's a little bad for me. Um, Earthen Testament is interesting. We're just going to get rid of it though. For resources. And next turn I can hopefully better in this. That would be just perfect. And I guess let us play Bunning better. Probably won't help me, but still another creature. I mean, at worst it's a moving wall. So hopefully it doesn't have anything to put in front of that. If he doesn't, I'm going to be able to Kinfolk Veteran. And he's thinking of going for order now, and does he have anything? Nope. Awesome. So I can get rid of them as well. And since he, since I'm gonna, ha he's gonna have nothing on the board, and I'm gonna have these two attacking creatures. I'm gonna split them up, uh, just because if he plays on anything board, at least it will be threatened by at least one of them. Obviously, this one attack isn't that threatening, but it's, it's something. So, goodbye. Little does he know I have a Jarl in my hand. <laughs> Urhald. I don't really know which or what Jarl is like a more valuable Jarl for their cost. Seven for him or eight for this guy? Right, you can't move, unfortunately. I think I'd rather I'll let him destroy this idol. And then I'll then I'll kill him. I'll move him myself. Let's I, I think I want to have the Wings Warder on the board when I play the Jarl. You know what? Screw it. YOLO. We're going to go straight for the Jarl. Because he's probably thinking I'm crazy going straight into... Going just literally straight into growth. That veteran that turn was huge for me. If he had that Hired Smuggler drawing him a scroll every other turn, I probably would have been toast. Look at look at all his resources. He can play like a lot of scrolls now. Snuggle Hunter, Shroud of Unlife. Okay, let's get rid of the Void Gate. All right, next turn. Next turn. I guess I'd rather keep the Veteran around than the Budding Veteran. Take control. But actually, I could just try to go on the bottom of the board. That wouldn't be a bad option. Okay, if he doesn't have like a balance, of, the chance there's only one. There's only two scrolls that can kill the uh, Yarl with seven health, Damning Curse and Balance Dispersal. So hopefully he does not have any of those in hand. But this guy's going to be a threat of his own. This this isn't a beast, right? Yeah, it's not a beast. So at least he's not going to get extra energy unless he decides to kill that. Fulman Nation Conduit. Oh, I just realized if he didn't play the Crown of Strength, I would have been able to kill him with the Jarl. That's cool. Fortunately, I couldn't. Do I deal two extra damage on him anyways? I mean, I'm I'm worried he has like a burn for the Budding Better and then he's going to like machinate like this guy to be able to kill the Jarl. His judgment chances he has those scrolls are so minuscule, I'm just going to... YOLO it. YOLO. Okay. And hopefully I can, uh, yeah, I just have to have this guy survive for a couple turns and get a Wings Warder on him. And then it'll be hard to destroy. Okay. You and you. Okay. I don't want to attack him with my, uh, Jarl. Yeah. Like, I don't want you to get poisoned. I mean, it would take a long time for you to die with the poison. Who knows? If he has a curse. Maybe he has like cursed presence, that'd be bad. Okay. Oh, this is a tough choice here. Wings Warder, it's gonna take two turns to play.
Um, or do I just play the Eternal Statue? Hmm. Thing is, if I just sacrifice a resource, he could have like a Blessing of Haste and a Focus, and I'm just screwed. Okay, let's just go with the Eternal Statue and hope he doesn't have like. I mean, yeah, Damage Curse and Battle Spurs are the two scrolls in the deck that could screw me over. I'll just hope he doesn't have that. And I'll make sure I use the Veteran to take out the Freak. And Eternal Statue in front. And next turn, I can Crimson Bull. To hopefully have you clear a row and be able to touch the idol in the back so you can attack again the next turn. Sorry about that beep, guys. Okay, Bog Hound. So it's six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is on that row. Uh, he did have a Blessing of Haste. So if he had a focus, good thing I uh, put that in front. Okay. Crimson Bull gives you eight, and that is three, five, seven. Perfect. That would clear this row. A uh, Husk would spawn. But then I would also hit the idol so you'd attack the following turn. That is exactly what I want to happen. And Herb is awesome, but might as well to get a Ripper on the board. Just in case he has like a bunch of power chips and like a Solemn Giant to take him out. Oh wait, my Frostbite is destroyed in combat. Oh, so if I move him, my units won't get the two attack buff. Worth a shot. Okay, so it's Crimson Bull and go to town. And you hit the idol, so you're gonna attack again. That was, the, I'm not gonna lie, that was perfect. Who <laughs> would've known? Frostbeard into Veteran into Jarl Erhalt. So he plays a Harvester. And I don't wanna like move down to engage the Harvester, because then you're not gonna attack every turn anymore. I think I could probably just win the game by just staying away from him, most likely. Get rid of this. And, uh, I mean, it's a pretty good high chance I don't get into play. I need a girl scroll to play, so it's fine. Six, three. I'm just going to take out that idol. I'm not going to move with you yet. I'll take the one more damage than the idol. I like having you attack next turn. That means you can't move anything into this row without destroying that. So... Could move down with the Ripper, but no, nah, I'm afraid of like some random thing happen where he has like some kind of hasted thing and like destroying this or halt. So this guy's gonna die from poison next turn. This harvest is probably gonna be able to get some attacks off from him because I don't have removal to really get rid of it, especially since I'm so far into growth. I don't really have a way to get rid of it unless I like top back like an unground, All right, untainted. Let's see. Do I have something? Nope, I have nothing. I could play something, but nope. Let's see. I mean, this probably just doesn't have enough health to defend this idol this coming turn. So I'm probably just going to win this this coming turn. I think, that, I think that's what he's thinking of. Yeah, he doesn't do the buff in when he dies from Searing Shackles. Okay, I feel like Crossroads should though. I mean, he's not really played often as it is. That'd be kind of cool. Oh, right, so he does have enough health to to block up that row. Uh, terrain brute was good. I could take out this and bring you to one, but then I wouldn't hit the idol, and I want to hit an idol so you attack next turn. So I'll do that, and I'll start going into a bit of order, and I also have a terrain brute to play. I'm not gonna play the ancestral pact, so. That's good. Yeah, I'm just not going to play him. It just makes the Harvester count down. He's really not hurting anybody. 
Okay, so next turn, with a pother I can play, I have a very high chance of winning the game considering both of these guys are attacking. It will be the real GG, I think. We'll see if we can get Lucky Brother. Our waking songs might be a pain in the butt. Okay. Ooh, Rumble. <laughs> I can go with a Pother and a Rumble. I guess that was perfect. Rumble's more YOLO than Pother. So I, I'm just gonna. I mean, Pother. I Pother this. And then I would have a 50%. No, I actually have a 100% chance of winning. Do I do the YOLO Rumble or just do the easy win Pother? YOLO Rumble it is. <laughs> so, there's a couple wins in Highlander versus Prince Eric. It was pretty fun. Thanks, uh, thanks for those matches. And nice way to celebrate my number one and two in the ladder. Hopefully I can have that for weekly winner. That'd be cool to see both my accounts there for weekly winners. I'm not sure if my second account in Rip the Ninja has any weekly winners. Actually, I think he has a couple of these ones or, or one of them where I got the most ones in the week with that account. I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't think he's gotten any of the ladder, like the one, two, three awards yet. And if I can get the award for number one this Sunday, I do get the Minecraft cape. So cross your fingers, guys. And that'll be it for today. So like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more content like this. And I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching.